Jackson State, Coach T.C. Taylor and the JSU Tigers took a pretty horrendous loss. Uh, pretty, pretty bad loss. 77 points were scored by Texas State in their win over JSU. Got to talk about it. Want to see how concerned you are, you guys are after the bumper. Stay tuned. going on everybody what is going on everybody my name is jeff lighty jr this is the victor formation sports show right here on jeff lighty jr youtube facebook wherever you get your content do me a favor hit that thumbs up button like share subscribe and hit the notification bell because we upload all the time now jackson state they went down to san marcos they didn't show up well no let me take it back <laughs> let me rewind that jackson state was supposed to go down to san marcos they did not show up i mean i'm just i'm gonna just call it what it is the special teams didn't show up specifically the special teams in defense the tackling, the angles, the coverage, everything was just super, super piss poor. I mean, I, I have no other way to summarize it. It wasn't like guys were just running wide open. Guys were just running through arm tackles. Let me go ahead and take you over to the box score. And I specifically want to go to the – now, here's the thing. Texas State is a – Texas State is a very well-coached team. Texas State is a good football team. This is the same Texas State team week one that upset Baylor. Like, Baylor is an FBS Power 5 team out of the Big 12. This same Texas State team beat Baylor. This same Texas State team is coached by G.J. Kinney, who led Incarnate Ward, one of the best offenses in all of FCS football the last few years. G.J. Kinney is a, is a great, great offensive coach. He's a great coach so far uh, early in his tenure as the head coach at Texas State and just early in his head coaching career. But with all of that said, this was embarrassing. I mean, Texas State is not the first FBS program Jackson State has ever played. Texas State probably won't be the last FBS program that Jackson State will ever play. Losing a game where you allow another team to score 77 points. Losing a game where you allow another team to score 56 points in the first half. Losing a game where you allow the team every single time they touch the ball, they scored a touchdown, specifically in the first half. That's a problem. That's not okay. And that is something that will have Coach Bradley, he don't got much hair, but we'll have him pulling his damn hair out. There's no moral victories in sports. Let's be honest. Like, there's no moral victories. And here's the thing. The JSU offense didn't look bad. Like, you saw Ahmad Miller come in and give you good burn. Irv Mulligan continue to play well. Even Jason Brown didn't look horrible. Now, Jason Brown is a statue, and in the ever-changing of college football, statues just typically aren't the best solution, especially if you can't block people. If you can't block their defensive line, and at times, especially late in that first, you know, throughout the game, you couldn't, the first few possessions Jackson State had, you were doing okay. But then you couldn't block te Texas State defensive line, and so having a a quarterback that can't move, having a quarterback that's very stationary, having a quarterback that really can't make things happen with his legs, it hurts. It hurts. And that's how you get sacked four times. And you put in a Zion McDonald. Granted, the game was out of hand by then. And he was very much out of hand. You put in a Zion McDonald, and he is able to make some plays. Jason Brown also made his one interception that you see on the screen. It was a bad throw in double coverage. It was a terrible throw in double coverage. Now, I'm not the coaches. I'm not the coaching staff. But I like what I've seen out of Zy McDonald this year. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you guys like what you've seen out of Zy McDonald? I would love to see Zy McDonald get more burn. I would love to see Zy McDonald get more playing time. I would love to see Zy McDonald get more PT. Now, here's the thing. Coming into the season, if I had to just choose, you know, from what I've seen, who was one of the best coordinators in all the SWAC? Just give me one of your best coordinators in all the SWAC. I could have assumed Maurice Harris just based off the work he's done at Liberty and Ole Miss, but I hadn't seen him in the SWAC. A coach that I had seen in the SWAC and had seen in the SWAC have success at his position was the defensive coordinator, Coach Bradley. Y'all know where I'm going with this, right? Y'all do know where I'm going with this. 
Coach Bradley's defense does not look good. Coach Bradley's defense is struggling tackling. Coach Bradley's defense just gave up 77 points. Now, let me let me say it, say something right here. There is a coach who has a worse grade than Coach Bradley right now. It's the special teams coordinator. <laughs> the special teams for JSU has been awful all year. When I, I tweeted during the game, because I'm not going to lie to y'all, I cut this game off when it was 56 at halftime. I cut it off. I didn't watch the second half. I did not watch the second half, so I'm not going to show too many stats and do it all because I didn't watch most of the second half because I because it was over. It was 56 to it had 56 points at halftime. And there was no need for me to watch the rest. They scored 77 points in this game. Now, granted, this, this is the best team you'll probably play all year. At the same time, the two really good teams that you've played, FAMU, I think, is a really good team. FAMU gave South Florida problems. FAMU handled business against West Florida. They're good. Texas State beat Baylor. Texas State is a really good football. They're FBS team. They're a really good team. The two teams, the two really good teams you played this year, your special teams did not show up. Your defense did not show up. Hell and fam, you, the first half of your offense didn't show up. And so that is concerning. It's concerning because I do think you can still beat the rest of the SWAC teams on your schedule. I do think you could, you know, put a beat down on Bethune next week. At the same time, you need help to make it back to the SWAC championship. And that's and that's all we're talking in context of the SWAC championship game. We're not talking as if you can't have a good season. We're not talking as if you can't do some really good things. We're not talking. But in the context of making it back to the SWAC championship game, you're going to need some help, meaning FAMU's got to lose, and you have to make sure you don't lose. You have to make sure you don't lose. And right now, I'm not that certain that there just isn't a SWAC team that can't beat you. Now, I'm not sure which one it is. Because <laughs> I'm looking at the schedule, and I still think you're better than Bethune and better than Alabama A&M and better than Bama State, who lost to a D2 school, and Bama better than Mississippi Valley, who lost to a D2 school, and better than Pine Bluff, even though Pine Bluff has played some. That's a, that's a tricky game there. It's on the road at Pine Bluff. Them boys play hard. Them boys play really hard. I don't know how much talent they have, but they play really hard. I'm not saying you're not better than Texas Southern, and we know all corn is a rivalry game, That a team that's always going to play you as hard as they can, a team that wants to win that game no matter what. But there is some concern. The quarterback play's got to be better. The special teams, you, you got to revamp your special teams. I mean, it's just – You've got to revamp your special teams. You go with the current situation that's happening on special teams, you're going to lose another SWAT game. You're going to lose to UAPB or, may, or Alcorn or some or may slip up against a, I don't know, a slip up against an Alabama a and If your special teams continues to play like that, you got to revamp it. It's got to do, you've got to revamp the defensive front. That 3 2 6 that you're playing with the three down lineman, it's not working. It's not working. Got to throw that. Throw that, throw that shit away. Like throw, throw that away, cause that ain't it. That ain't it at all. And Bethune ain't just gonna lay down. Now another thing too. Now this is just in future reference. As there's no way in hell. Let me repeat. There is no way in hell. They can nobody pay you enough money to start the first four games of the season on the road. Thank you God that is over with. There is no way. Ashley Robinson, T.C. Taylor. I don't know whoever needs to hear this. You should never play your first four games of the season on the road. You go to Atlanta, from Atlanta to Miami, from Miami to Mumford, go down to oh, Baton Rouge, rather. Not Mumford, Baton Rouge, I'm sorry. To Baton Rouge, and then from Baton Rouge to San Marcos, a.k.a. You know, San Marcos, Texas. No. Thank God that is over. You'll get some home cooking, and hopefully you get some home cooking ass whooping to Bethune Cookman. I'm just being honest because that's what you need right now. Getting 77 hung on you is not a good feeling. Getting 77 hung on you, whether you whether that team was supposed to beat you or not, as a football team, that's pretty demoralizing. Like that's that's rough. 77 points is a basketball score. 77 points should be put up in football games. 56 points should be put up in first halves. 
I get it. They're an FBS team. But you went into that game wanting to win. Not just be competitive. You wanted to win. And for a while, your offense looked like it had enough juice to win. You were making enough plays on offense to make things happen. Like I said, a true freshman, Aubrey Miller's little brother, Ahmad Miller, come in making plays. Irv Mulligan with two touchdowns. Big plays being made by guys on offense. But you got to, there's a lot of tightening up that needs to be happening. What happened was the same faults that you had against fam, you just got a bigger magnifying glass put on it. You know, fam, you, you struggled with special teams. Fam, you, you struggled on defense at times. Fam, you, you couldn't get any pressure. This year, you really haven't. And that is, I think, is the biggest key, the biggest difference between this year and last year. Obviously, you can say quarterback play is a difference. But the biggest difference to me is the, there's no, there is zero pressure on the quarterback this year. The last two years, JSU has led the country in sacks. There is zero pressure this year. This game, you had one tackle for loss. Devontae Davis was able to make one tackle for loss. That's it. That is it. That, that's a problem. And if you're not able to get pressure on these quarterbacks moving forward, you could lose another game. And that takes you out of the running for a SWAC championship. And since that's all you're playing for, and that's all that matters, that is a problem. Got to figure the things out on defense and special teams. I think the offense, I think the offense you have, you have so many good pieces. Isaiah Spencer is a good player. Got to make sure you take care of Isaiah Spencer. Irv Mulligan, good player. Seven McGee, they're slowly working seven back into the lineup. I honestly thought we'd see a lot more of seven by now. I'm surprised that how, you know, how slow the ramp up is. Getting seven back on the field, I, I did not see it taking this long. But getting seven back into the rhythm will help. But I, I don't think the offense will be a problem. I think you'll be able to score points against these uh, other SWAC schools. The problem is they might be able to score points on you. And that is just not something we've been accustomed to recently with Jackson State football. That is something that the coach is going to have to go back to the film room, go back to the drawing board, and figure out, revamp it in the entire special teams. And figure out some of this defensive stuff too, because seventy-seven points is just, it just, it's uncalled for. That's, that just, that just can't sit right with anybody. I get it's a twenty-four hour rule. You're on the Bethune Cookman. At the same time, these are things. Having these issues, special teams can lose you a game. Giving up a big play here and there can lose you a game. Specifically, lose you a game to a team you're not supposed to lose to. So those are my observations from essentially just watching the first half and looking at the box score after the game because I, I couldn't stomach myself watching the rest of that game. I'm going to be honest. I could not. When I, seen, when I seen 56 points before halftime. I couldn't stomach myself to watch the rest of that. But G.J. Kenny is a good coach. Somebody's going to come get him from Texas State. He's he's doing his thing. It went over Baylor, what he was able to do with Incarnate Ward. He's a, he's a hell of a coach, and they've got a nice team over there uh, that will do some things in the Sun Belt. At the same time, I thought JSU would put up a better fight than that, and they were putting up a fight. They just couldn't tackle anybody. They couldn't tackle anybody, and they couldn't – special teams couldn't cover kicks, and that's a problem. Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. I do think they'll bounce back and have a good showing against Bethune-Cookman. That'll tell you a lot more about this team, how resilient you are, and how can you bounce back from one of the worst losses in school history. One of the worst performances, giving up 77 points in school history. Um, that'll be interesting to see how they're able to overcome. And Bethune-Cookman, y'all might want to buckle up your chin strap because they might be coming out for vengeance after get, getting their tail whooped. They might be trying to whoop some tail this week against BCU and Coach Raymond Woody Jr. My name is Jeff Lighty Jr. This is the Victory Formation Sports Show right here on Jeff Lighty Jr. YouTube, Facebook, wherever you get your content. Do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button, like, share, subscribe, and the notification bell because we upload all the time. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for tuning in. Also, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter, X, at JLighty7, that is on Twitter, X, and Instagram, at JLighty7. Thank you guys for tuning in, and I will see you next time. Peace.